wealth within. They gave me that feeling of trust. What you learned in the course was just mind-blowing. Amazing. It was phenomenal. It opens your mind up and makes you realise you don't know what you don't know. I've got the tools now. 100% worth it. Definitely get educated. Hello and welcome to Wealth Within's weekly hot stock tips. I'm Dale Gillen, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Every Tuesday night, you can see me on the Australian Stock Market Show live on YouTube alongside two amazing professional traders, Janine Cox and Philip Tortevsky. In the show, we answer important questions around the stock market, cover lots of great stocks and help you become a better trader. Today, we unveil what's hot and what's not for you, our viewers. But before we dive into this week's stocks, Today I'm joined by Philip Tovtevsky. How are you doing? Good morning, Dale. Yes, good to be back. Market new all-time highs. What more do you want? Well, look, it's utopia for us, isn't it, when the market's moving? And uh, it just vindicated what we've been talking about for a while. It's yeah. just be patient. The market is going to go bullish. And um, all the naysayers saying, no, you're wrong because the market's going to crash. Um, so we say, no, 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 no. Well, we could, but we're not. <laughs> we're not. Well, anyway, let's get straight into it. On your screen right now is a watch list of the top 200 ASX stocks. And as you can see, there's Zip up 15.5%, Phil. It is, yeah, Zip wow. up 15%. Real crazy. I mean, this stock, obviously, the darling of the mm. COVID era where everyone was at home and, and trading from their bedroom. But oh, look, I'm not oh, surprised yeah. given the fall that it had post uh, 2020, because wow. one look at this company, obviously, still mm. still not making any money. Um, but again, as you you know, we're talking off air. This is one of those darlings that perhaps everybody's buying into. Can it repeat the feats of? How many times have we seen that a stock that's you know gone you know zooming up made people lots of money? Uh, mm. And I'm talking about retail investors and and all the great unwashed people that not necessarily know how to trade. Mm. They make money and then it just tanks and they lose all their money. But then they want to see it repeat. Exactly that again, and mm. and th th it's not going to happen. Yeah, it's they're not going to. It will not repeat this whole big run. Uh, it'll be much more steady. It'll fall, go back down into its normal rhythm. Mm. And I think people don't realise that. But yeah. it's not making money. So how's it supposed to grow if it's not making money? Well, that's the point. I mean, you know, people talk yeah. about pump and dumps, but yeah. I mean, you know, when when stocks aren't making money, generally it get it gets found out mm. in the market. And um, rule number one: buy stocks that actually make money. Right. Rule number two, refer to rule number one. <laughs> yeah. so, but anyway, let's go back onto that watch list and have another quick look anyway, because obviously we've got Sims up 11%, Centura. Mm. It's a nice broad, you know, right across the, here we've got mining, we've got banks, we've got, um, you know, uh, retail, you know, Life, Life 360, that's looking really good as well. A um, whole range of different stocks right through here, looking pretty good, but nicely broad. We haven't got stuff that's really, really shooting out the lights. And I like what's happening through here. Down the bottom end, we've got computer share that paid a dividend last week. So that's some of that drop. Um, I don't know really why the rest of it. Um, you know, Star Entertainment Group also down nine, ALS down seven, nearly eight, Helios down the same thing. But again, you know, AT Milk, that's been doing so well um, over the last few months, but it's just had a little bit of a weakness. So this could be a com becoming an opportunity soon. But you know, it's pretty again pretty broad. You know, we've got minerals, resources there, you know, still going down. One we've been telling people to be careful of from, you know, because they could be, you know, buying a falling knife, whereas, you know, this is sort of the ones you should be staying out of. But nothing too stressful for me on that one, is it? No, no. And I mean, last week we saw mineral resources as mm -hmm. the best performer. And we did say, you know, be careful with these one week performances because yeah. they don't, one week does not make a trend in mm -hmm. the actual market. So proof right there about how, you know, you really need to wait and hone in on these opportune times in the market because mm -hmm. lows trends they don't form in a week in a day they take time if you are looking to capture that significant part or significant mm. rise in the actual market so um yeah that's I'd have all to, i'll say I, on that mate, one. i'd have to agree with anyway so what is hot in the market this week well on your screen right now is our hot stock tip for the week which is webjet now the stock ticket code is web so on the left of the screen is your monthly and on the right of the screen is the weekly do you want to talk about this one yeah sure so we've just left this on there obviously this one came out with some really good earnings um in its most recent report which is Obviously, really nice. We just spoke about Zip not mm. making any money, but having that nice tailwind for companies, good, strong companies, it's no brainer yeah. to the top 50 companies when you look through their financials. You know, more often than not, most of the time, 99% mm. of the time, they are making money, they're performing. Yeah. Um, and um, we saw that really nice with Webjet if we just go back to the uh, chart there for you. But it's one thing looking at fundamentals, the uh, knowing what. 
but knowing the when through the technicals really is the power which is going to separate you um, in terms of outperforming the market and getting those best risk reward trade setups. And right now what we're seeing with Webjet, the reason I've chosen this one is because obviously throughout this, um, you know, since 2016, this horizontal line, $7.30 has been a really important level. You saw it provide huge support before the COVID crash and it, it gravitate back towards that level, find its feet. Now it's on the flip side mm. where it was support in the past. It's bounced off it more recently. And right now it's very, very interesting because we are in a nice uptrend and we're not accelerating away. That's the point. Mm. You know, when you're looking at charts, and you're looking through periods like this in 2016, and also what we saw at the end in 2018, strong accelerated moves generally signal the end of ups or downtrends. But we're not seeing that with this current uptrend. We found a really nice support base around $5.30. Rise up, healthy pullback. Rise up, healthy, healthy pullback. pullback. As long as it moves up and down within the natural angle of trend, mm. you do get, you know, one, you do get more opportunities to get involved in the stock, but you have this, the solace of knowing you're not buying in at that exorbitant um, euphoria stage, Correct. if you will, mm. which generally is not the best place to buy. So if we just go back to the, the chart there for you, the other reason why I, I quite like this one is we have come into, if we zoom out on the weekly chart, the level where the really strong buying happened back in March 2024, you saw this huge weekly bar, which signaled very strong buying. Sellers came to test it through this level, but buyers said, hey, not happening. Pushed it back up for a second level. We've had a second bout of sellers come to test it on multiple occasions. And look how strong the bar was last week. Yeah. So I think, you know, now is the time to find those opportunities to get in after these healthy pullbacks because this one obviously in uptrend, nice um, news following. And I think... Uh, so it, um, is it a buy now or should people wait for a little bit? Well, watch? the first thing, it depends on your strategy. Yep. Are you short, medium or long term? Okay. The shorter you are right now with these, you know, big, strong bars, potentially it's time to wait. If you're more medium to long term, then this signals very uh, cool. a, a very strong um, um, sign that there are buyers in the market. Take all that aside. It's about yeah. what rules you have in place. <laughs> now, we're not going to discuss particular trading rules um, on today's show, but really it boils down to mm. that. If your rules satisfy the stuff that you've back tested, you know, works on this stock, and it's presenting to you at these levels, then I would say, hey, get in. Yeah, I, I, part of the reason why I ask is because um, on Friday afternoon, I was being interviewed by Bloomberg. Oh, yeah. Um, and they were asking about traders trading, you know, speculative mining stocks, micro cappy type stocks, those sorts of things, and what people are doing with it. And people have lost lots and lots of money. So they're mm. hearing lots of stories of a lot of people losing a lot of money on different stocks. And they were saying, well, what is it? Why are they doing that? And I said, because they don't have trading rules. Mm. It's basically as simple as that. They just see something move and they jump on it and they're speculating that they're going to make a lot of money because it's a cheap stock. Now, that's what you're talking about is having rules around, yeah. around about. I think I, I think I was on the call with them for about half an hour. I had their minings and metals stock and commodities person and their other person um, both throwing questions at me, firing them at me. But basically it gets down to is you need to know what you're doing, which is what you're actually saying. Yeah, because you, if you mm. don't know the rules, then how are you going to uh, line up what the risk reward scenario mm. is? How are you going to know before you get in on that trade? Mm. What am I willing to risk? What am I willing to make? I mean, it's that common mm. uh, saying, if you don't know where you're going, how, you, how are you going to get, get there? there? Oh, do you watch Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> cool. Well, that bit. is it for my hot stock tip. Now we're moving on to a stock that should make you proceed with caution. And this one is Fortescue Metals and with a stock ticket code of FMG. Now on your screen right now, is, on the left is the monthly chart, on the right is the weekly chart as per normal, but look at the fall that that stock had. Isn't it interesting? And I'm glad you picked up the fall on this one, Dale, because that is the major talking point for mm. Fortescue Metals. It is a caution, but um, if we, you know, like we do every week, signal whether it's a bearish or a bull bullish caution, to me it's more on the positive side. And the reason I've marked that particular fall is we've had three major sharp falls for this stock throughout its history. Obviously, there have been periods where the stock's fallen potentially mm. longer in terms of percentage, but I'm talking about the sharpness of the falls and the, the, reason, of it. the yeah. reason why they're important mm. is because, um, as we mentioned before, as that euphoria happens on the way up, it happens quite sharply, which signals the end, but that also happens on the way down. Yeah. The real fear, the panic selling, which happens quick and mm. is very, very sharp. Now, we, that typically signals the end. You can see we saw a major low come in after October 2008. And if I zoom in, it took about six bars, which is about five months throughout this period for that low 
to come in. Very different to everything that we have seen compared to what has happened, you know, following. We took to get from January 2011 to 2013, much longer than five months. And then to get from 14 down to 15, another significant low, mm. much longer than five months. You can see the visually the big difference in the way these lows are forming. But another significant low was the COVID low. Yeah. Now that took about three or four months to eventuate. Since then, the most recent one that's uh, formed in this type of fashion is what's happening of late. And that's taken about what is eight that? Months. Eight months. Well, seven, co considering oh, if we're not counting the there. The so, last bar is, you know, went yeah, halfway through it. So yeah. we're there about, and there are dynamics mm. behind why markets do bounce really strongly after experiences the, these kinds of moves, because really it's not sustained selling. And, you know, this could even catch the, the smart money out when the move falls so quickly, meaning that, hey, generally it's not going to be a long-term downtrend. Long-term downtrends unfold uniformly. Yeah. They take time because it allows the smart money to roll out of a position and not get caught on their on their way down. So I think, you, I mean, just to cut you off a little mm. bit there, as I think looking at this, the US rate cut last week being half a percent, not mm -hmm. a quarter of a percent, puts a lot on their bottom line. Both mm -hmm. BHP, Rio, Fortescue, puts a lot on their bottom line because they're trading in US dollars. Yeah. And, you know, that, you know, one cent difference in the, the currency exchange between Aussie dollar and, and the US dollar makes a massive amount of difference to yeah. profit that comes through. So if you see another rate cut on the US, it's just going to keep pushing these stocks up, isn't it? And we've seen oh, yeah. materials do so well the last couple of weeks. Well, it's been two, three mm. weeks since it's well, been Well, they've been anticipating the that rate cut over the last mm. more than a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing both the, both the material sector over the last two weeks doing very, very well. So I'd, look, I love this at the moment. Yeah. Too early to buy, though. Well, took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> exactly too early to buy. But um, what's interesting is that it is coming into this mm. uh, previous low in September 2022. And we are seeing really strong. I mean, it's important looking at these the, I guess, tails or the mm. way these bars unfold. Now, last week we saw buyers come in with the bar closing relatively near the middle of the range. And this week, um, or sorry, this month, we're still not at the end of September, but if we close near the high of this month, then that tells me buyers have picked up this whole downswing, very mm. bullish sign. So really keep an eye out for those opportunities on this one. Well, that is it for our cautionary stock. Now, lastly, what's not hot in the stock market this week? Woodside Energy as a stock with the stock ticket code of WDS. So let's get into the charts. Again, monthly chart on left, weekly chart on the right. And it looks so bearish, doesn't it? It does. It's unfortunate because, it you know, $30 was such an important level for this one. If we just zoom out, you know, you can see how important $30. Mm -hmm. And I've marked the two most important levels dating back to 2008. You can see... Obviously, one at um, $38, $39, and the other one being $30. Now, there was potential that it would support around there. We also had this nice trend line or momentum line where the stock could have found support, but really it hasn't done that. It's fallen back through. So the two most important levels, the stock's fallen below. To me, mm -hmm. it is a bit bearish at the moment. Where could it get to from here is the question. I think $19, $20 is the next level to be watching out for. But again, it's one thing watching for it to fall to a level, and then it's waiting for that confirmation, which could take months, weeks to get yep. going in reverse. The other thing I look at, look at this stock, and it's one of our biggest stocks in our marketplace, but it just shows you why you shouldn't buy and hold. Oh, and yeah. this is where I see so many people, you know, they look at a stock like this and they go, well, it's a big, big, big stock, you know, but look, it's all time high. It's way, way back there in 2008, you know, and if you'd bought it, Anywhere on this run up into that 2008, you wouldn't be too real happy about it, would you, at the moment? But it's paying me a dividend. But now. it's paying you a dividend, which <laughs> is really useless. But, you know, it, obviously it fell down. That's nearly 80% it fell from that, that high. Yeah. But it's not a buy and hold stock. And there's a lot of stocks. Even the banks are not buy and hold. The big four banks, because we saw them fall for five years. And this is one of those big myths that people have in the marketplace is you know, buy and hold. But you don't make much. You, don't, you make money, but you don't make much money. And even, that's a challenge. I would even argue no stock is buy and hold because every mm. stock is subject to volatility. Mm. Every stock is subject to moving up and down. So your capital is always at risk. Probably only one I'd be looking at would be like CSL or a Cochlear, something like that. But even even, even they, they have their downward moves. But yeah. I don't, you know, buy and hold this does, does not really work. Anyway, that is it for our bad stock for this week. Now, thanks for watching this edition of Wealth Within's Weekly Hot Stock Tips. Now, remember to tune in to the live Australian stock market show on YouTube from 7 p.m. Eastern Time 
every Tuesday night. Now to find us, just type Wealth Within Live into the YouTube search. Now remember, have your phone ready to call in live to speak to us so we can answer your questions. The number is 03-9290-9988. Or you can email into the show right now by sending your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au. Now, if you want a copy of my first book, you can still get it for free. You just got to pay the shipping. You can order it from our homepage, wealthwithin.com.au. Now, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. And I want to thank Phil for your excellent comments today, mate. My pleasure, Dale. Thank you very much. And I look forward to chatting with everyone tomorrow on the Australian Stock Market Show live on YouTube. Well, thanks, Phil. And thank you to you for watching our video for now. Goodbye, good luck, and good trading.